Hey, it's Chris. Post-game convention blues gotcha. What do you need to know about what's making waves in the near future? What are you missing out on just like me because you don't go to conventions? Well, I'm here to give you the lowdown, the scoop, and everything you need to know because we just had Gamma. And in case you're a social media person, you see issues like that all the time pop up. Well, it's good at making the grass look greener on the other side, right? But I'm going to help you out with this one. And in case you're not aware of what Gamma stands for, it stands for Games I Am Missing Again. Let's do this. What are we talking about first? We're talking about Disney's Lorcana. I have no clue where this is coming from, but people were playing it hands-on. People have dedicated their whole YouTube channels, podcasts, everything else in between to Lorcana at this point. I just saw a Mickey Mouse, one of those rare promos that came out at the very beginning when this was announced, go for, well, they actually didn't go for it, but someone has it listed on eBay for $25,000. Most of them are selling for about two grand, but just ridiculous, re freaking ridiculous already. Well, Dice Tower apparently got copies, so they put out an early impressions video as well. So we're about four months away from the rest of us humble peasants getting able to play it. Um, it's still going to make a lot of waves and people are wondering where you can pre-order it. And, you know, booster boxes are going for $200 online right now for the secondary market. It's just crazy, crazy speculative market. Is the game actually going to be any good? Well, you can go check out the rules yourself already on Ravenburger's website, but I don't know. Impressions are just kind of all over the place. You've got a lot of Disney fanboys hyping things up. And, you know, I want to like this game. I also don't want to like it because it's a TCG and I could see myself going either way. Kid mass appeal. Sure. Actual gameplay in there. Sure. Doing something different target wise for an end game standpoint than the other TCGs out there. Yeah, it appears so. So I'm colored, very intrigued by this one. At the same time, meh. If it's going to cost that much to get into, Peace out. See you later. But let's talk about other things that have a good pedigree already to begin with, right? Cascadia. Cascadia just recently announced Flat Out Games. New expansion. Landmarks. And there was some testing. There's a North American copy or two floating around. And I'm assuming you'll see some more waves come from that standpoint in the near future. But the tricky point is I haven't seen what they're going to do with it. And I'm assuming it's just going to be a retail thing. And when you've got a Spiel de Jahres winner already on your hands, how do you release something like that? Do you take as many pre-orders and as much cash up front as you can on a crowdfunding situation when you already know that it's going to be, you know, widely available? Or do you just throw it straight to the wolves at retail? It's an interesting market test point, right? And... I can't say I blame them. I, do I want a fifth player? No. Do I want the additional landmarks to give it just something a little bit more? Yeah. Do I fear it's going to be an Isle of Sky expansion that's going to take the beauty of its simplicity in a sense and make it too much at the same time? Yeah, that's my fear. Am I going to stop myself from buying it? No, I'm not. And so that's just going to be the question. Is it going to be one of those expansions that you throw in there now and you never play without? Or is it very group dependent? Is it very selective in how you're going to do that? And so that's going to be more the question point. So I know a lot of people are getting hyped up about that one. Clarification, per the Burgundy Geek forums, Cascadia Landmarks is going straight to retail sometime in the fall. No date officially announced, though. So you can nix it off the crowdfunding side of things, at least. Speaking of hyped from companies with good pedigrees, we'll just stay with this theme. We're going to go with Direwolf. Now, we're not talking about Clank Legacy, which just wrapped on Kickstarter, but we're going to be talking about their other upcoming retail game, uh, The Way the Dunes Went. And we're going to be talking about Wild Tiled West, a Wild West themed tile laying game. OK, OK. Wild West, underappreciated. Tile laying, one of my favorite mechanics. See Cascadia, although, I mean, again, slightly different there. But right. Dice Tower did a playthrough on their little game spring break fling-a-thon. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And so there's a little bit of details known out there. I don't really think there's a release date. So we're just kind of have to wait and see. Again, this is another game that I would love to have in my collection to be able to try it out and talk to you guys about it because I got, um, actually, uh, I don't know where Clank Catacombs is. It's coming soon. I don't know. It's still somewhere over there in the pile, but that's going to be coming out as well. I would imagine sometime in the next, you know, quarter or so. Direwolf has a great track record recently, especially at the retail side of things. So I can't really argue if they're going to put out a game with a highly rated designer and mechanics that suit me as a non wishless game, right? So that one is going to be starting to make some waves here in the near future. Similarly, on the review side, I've seen this pop up numerous places. I don't know if this was just on mass sent to reviewers or what. You have Votes for Women, which is a game based on the getting of suffrage for women, the 19th Amendment, 
pass through Congress through all the states. And so you're going as a two-player dueling style game, head to head, trying to pass it or trying to <laughs> not pass it, right? Like you want to be on the bad side of that one. It's like playing the Nazis in one of the war games. Uh, but I mean, that's the sort of dynamic they're going for. And, you know, people are really liking it. Personally speaking, they're not anti-woman whatsoever. I'm anti-historical. Like I don't do Civ games. I don't do historical games. I don't do war games typically. So the theme just doesn't hit home with me in that sense. But if people say it's as good as like a Twilight Struggle, you know, style of two player dueling card game, can't really argue with that either. So because the other thing I say on this channel all the time is gameplay beats out theme, in my opinion, for my own personal tastes, every single freaking time. So if the gameplay is that good, you know what? I'm all for good gameplay. So I've seen a lot of that making it in the secondary rounds of the media side of things. So if you don't see that one popping up soon from numerous channels outlets, because I think it's already been out in the last week or two as well, um, don't be surprised. Next up, we're gonna go slightly different. We're gonna go with a re-thematic incorporation in case you missed out on the Ethnos train when it rode to the station the first time around. Well, now we're getting a wreath and that was getting some waves as well at Gamma. And it's just an archaeology retheme of Ethnos with an area control set collection style with Vincent Dutre art. So it absolutely looks fantastically beautiful. Is the gameplay going to be significantly different? I mean, I like the idea in theory of those combinations of mechanics, but it just always left me feeling dry, wanting, and somewhat unsatisfyingly not fulfilled. And so I can see myself passing on it the second time around unless the gameplay dynamics have shifted. Going in a completely opposite direction, we have the art project coming up from Lumberjack Studio. And this one's a very interesting concept because you're playing as this uh, art rescue team, essentially against thieves who are stealing art all around the globe. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to play against the game and stop the thieves from actually achieving their goal of you know stealing art, famous works of art all around the globe in the first place. And what you're doing is you're drawing mission cards at the beginning that allow you to decide turn order of the rounds and then using allies, clues, and resources, you can um, manage them to stop them. And so you have seven weeks in order to do that, whatever the time frame is going to look like. And with the Vincent Dutrait art, I can't help but look at this one and go, wow, that seems really kind of like a cool concept. And a hard co-op game with resource management, pandemic-esque style. Well, I mean, you know, those are the sweet, sweet words to my heart if you will, uh, from this channel side of things. And so I'm really intrigued as what unique mechanics is it actually going to show me in detail or is it just going to be a rehash of other mechanics I'm familiar with? I'm not opposed to either, but it has to be done with excellence because the bar is set high now from a cooperative side of things, uh, especially at retail. Speaking of that, cooperatively, now the other one that caught my eye, again, this is going to be a very interesting concept. I like the idea of it, but in theory, how well does it work in practicality? And we're talking about Sky Team from La Scorpion Mask. And I mean, I'm heavily looking at them from more for dead cells right now, but Sky Team is a two player cooperative. You're trying to land a plane and prevent it from crashing. And you have to do so with a card driven mechanic. Two players, 15 minute time frame, roll dice to land them on the correct spaces in the cockpit in order to balance the plane, control its speed, deploy everything that you need to, as well as contact the tower and let them know where you're coming. I mean, it sounds too good to be true. But if it offers a dynamic gameplay with a little bit of luck, a little bit of randomness, and a little bit of control at the same time, 15 minutes, two players, a game perfectly cooperative with my wife, can it be done? I don't know. But, I mean, that's why it made the shortlist, and that's why I think people were getting a little bit of buzz. Contact second high buzz out of Gamma from that reason. And last up, I saw a little bit of buzz coming out of it as well. The upcoming game from Darrington Press, Critical Role's tabletop side of things, which has yet to really show us what they can actually do on the table apart from role playing and uh, doing it very, very well. We're going to see what Queen by Midnight has in store for us with a unique take, apparently, on its deck building basis of mechanic. And what they're doing here is they're allowing you 200 different princess cards because the princess is dead, because the queen is dead and you're trying to take over by a midnight as the new queen. 200 cards to rebuild your deck, a uh, dice tower clock, time management face you when it's your turn centerpiece that is going to be utilized as the main mechanic and so again that sort of sounds all really good on paper sounds really good in theory does it actually hold water or hold cards or hold your attention and be more than a superfluous everdale tree style of conflagration on the table in the first place so that's the big question mark and i have no idea wasn't terribly impressed with Darrington Press's first game that came out, and we'll see where this is going to go as well. This, again, more of my style in terms of mechanics, 
but the whole package, we'll see. That's it for the Post Gamma Convention update. The uh, latest, hottest games that came across my radar, what you should need to know about them, and a little bit more info to put them on your radar. Don't worry, you're not the only one missing conventions, though. Uh, all the other board game creators are having their own little private convention parties as well around the United States at this time, and uh, it's always weird seeing those pop up on social media, too. Like, oh, they went to that one. Oh, they went to that one. It's like, where's my invite? Ah, I got a better idea. I'm going to make my own. <laughs> Make my own. Michigan. Gamma. MAGA. No!